I've been waiting patiently to do this video on Casemiro because we've all been waiting patiently for his first Premier League start for Manchester United. But against Everton, I think we saw exactly how he can help transform this Manchester United midfield. So make sure you drop a like on this video. I think it's going to be a good one. I think you'll enjoy the next 10 minutes of your life. A bit like you enjoyed the majority of that game yesterday. But Casemiro, doubt has started to emerge. Oh, he's just been, we've been sold a dud. Remain patient and remain patient is what I've been trying to say. Now, yesterday, BT Sport gave him man of the match. I thought it was Luke Shaw. That's a personal opinion. But this man here is the first actual proper out-and-out -out instinctive natural defensive midfielder we've signed in God knows how long. And I've been banging on about how we've needed one for so long. So to see one and to see there the, the, the workings of it, it wasn't perfect. Far from it. I'll run through every element of the game. But I'm so excited to see how Casemiro develops as any United shirt this year. Big up to Laurie Whitwell for writing this article. Uh, I took a few, couple of screen grabs from this. Big up The Athletic. Always enjoy The Athletic's art. But look, let's run through. Let's speak about what Casemiro got right in the game and what he got wrong in the game. Because there was certainly parts he got wrong. And that's what I'm going to start with. Now, Casemiro gave away the ball 17 times. More than any other player on the pitch. He won the ball back nine times. More than any other player on the pitch for United. Casemiro has to be better at understanding the intensity of the Premier League. And I think what we saw yesterday was him getting caught out by that. This example here. Now, Anthony's got the ball in this situation. Oh, look at these sexy new pink circles. Don't know why it's pink. Uh, but Casemiro, you can see it there. He thinks he's got enough space for it. And with Onana over there, he's like, yeah, you know, you can't want that. That's a safe enough environment for Casemiro to receive the ball. He scanned the area. He felt it was good. Alas. It wasn't good because we saw what happened. Onana closed down that space really quickly as soon as he got the ball. He wins the ball, breaks into this area here, and we know what happens. It leads to the first goal for Everton. Casemiro underestimated, or overestimated, sorry, how much time he had on the ball. And I think that's just coming through him adapting to the Premier League. So much dust and rust was, I think, brushed off yesterday in that game against Everton. And that's why I'm really, really excited. I'm looking at that point there. That was the low point for Casemiro in that game. Now, of course, he lost. But I think there are definitely... I would... What was it? Seven, seven to an eight out of ten performance. I think I won about seven and a half. Can't remember in the live stream this morning. Casemiro's got so much more he will improve on. But this is what we all want to see Casemiro do. And this is where we saw the best of him. Let's get rid of that off the screen. Look at that. Me using tactical balls. Iwobi's got the ball here. Casemiro's actually just lost it. Iwobi's going to run into this space. And of course, Casemiro is over here. And we know what happens because this is in the build-up to the goal for Cristiano Ronaldo. Casemiro reads it perfectly. An absolutely meticulously timed tackle here. And Casemiro wastes no time in bringing the ball forward into that area. He reads the situation perfectly. Iwobi has no chance. It's top-tier defensive midfield work. That's ultimately what we want to see from Casemiro this season for Manchester United. And we know what happened next. As soon as he had that, he looked up and he said, you know what? He can see the ball and he lays that through for Ronaldo. And it was an absolutely sublime ball. Ronaldo runs through, perfectly weighted, didn't really have to break his stride. Man United go forward. We score the second. 2-1 to United. And Casemiro, that's the best of Casemiro right there. Reading a situation, let's go back here and pull these up again. Not the best of it to give it away, but reading the situation, getting that, that tackle perfectly timed, releasing the ball within two steps, Ronaldo goes through and scores. It's not the fact that he got an assist. The measure of a successful defensive midfielder is not whether or not he's got an assist. It's how many of those tackles he makes. That's what we want to see more from from Casemiro. We want to see less of him giving the ball away in the first place, and more of those. And I imagine well, that's going to come in time, but I'm so excited to see how he grows across the course of the season. I really, really am. I hope you enjoyed this video. I've got some new software. I'm trying to, I'm trying to make it more engaging. I, don't, I can't afford the old, uh, the big sky Monday night football jobbies. This is my version of it. I hope you're enjoying it. But let's go into it. And this, this I felt was a particularly good example of it as well. Pointed out by Laurie, but I remember it in the game. This is in the 23rd minute. Casemiro, as you can see, he's receiving the ball in quite a, quite a tough situation. 
David De Gea is releasing the ball from there. Everton have got a lot of men on the press. They've got one, two, three. Wow, well, I suppose it's a bit of a stretch to call that four on the press. But they're coming aggressive. And the ball is about to be thrown into Casemiro at pace here. It's a tricky situation. But he gets around it with a very, very smart round the corner pass. First time. If he had taken anything, anything of a touch there, or just a touch in general, he would have got caught in possession. But instead, by doing that first time, it allows the ball to be played into this space. That, that, that scenario there breaks through the Everton press. The ball goes to Delo. Eventually, it goes to Anthony, I think, further on down the pitch. But that gives United an opportunity out of nothing. And look, all of a sudden, that big press that Everton had there has been broken just by one smart pass around the corner. That's intelligence. That's really smart play by Casemiro. And again, I wouldn't say that's going to be the, the prime example of... I don't particularly think... Oh, actually, no, they're saying that we probably will be. This is effectively where we wanted Frankie de Jong to be playing, not Casemiro. You wanted him to be the deeper line playmaker, the person who can make those balls around the corner, but Casemiro is capable of it. And that's going to add a real steal to our defence and our midfield that is required, it's necessary. He's a team player, man. Yesterday was a team performance. And I think from Casemiro, as I said, we saw the best and we saw the worst from it. Worst of it. I'm not going to put this down as the worst of it because I think it's a very good element. But Casemiro is not just that enforcer who's going to break up play. He does have more to his game. I think this move sort of typified that. So he receives. So you've got Ericsson here. You've got Casemiro in midfield. Casemiro receives the ball quite quickly from Ericsson in a good place. United playing out from the... I think it plays to De Gea. The... Uh, to Martinez, Martinez to Delo, Delo he finds Ericsson, and Ericsson finds a nice ball about there through to Casemiro. Let's move this forward a little bit. Casemiro receives it here, receives it into space, and he plays a fantastic ball right over there. He looks around, he's, he knows he's got the space to run into, and he uses that space. Let's move forward here. Ball's out here now to Marcus Rashford. And Marcus Rashford is there. What Casemiro does, this is what I thought was very, very good. He just drifts. You know, interestingly enough, actually, look at that. Ericsson's actually deeper than him here. Interesting to note that. Look at the space between the two. And Casemiro just drifts slowly forward like that. He continues his run forward. And Rashford finds him with an absolute perler. An absolute perler of a cross. And I'll be honest. That should be flying top bins. That should absolutely be flying into top bins. Casemiro's got to score. Absolutely got to score there. But the fact that he's drifted into a position like that, it goes to show that he, he's... Mate, he's an elite-level footballer, man. Anybody who, th who thinks the fact that McTominay played a few games because he was on form means that Eric Ten Hag didn't want to sign him, weird. Weird. It's, it's, it's obviously not the case. You can't judge at that point. I have absolutely no doubt that by the end of the season, I don't think there's going to be anybody doubting whether or not Casemiro was a good signing by Eric Ten Hag for Manchester United. I think he's going to be an elite level signing. And he is the defensive midfielder that we've been desperate for. As Laurie Whitwell runs through here in that article, there are definitely elements. Uh, he's still rusty. Losing the ball in this position, he should not be doing that. He thought he had more space and time on the ball because he would have previously had more space and time on the ball. But instead, he gets closed down Loses the ball and United go 1 0 down. But I tell you what, he recovered from that. He really recovered well. And this is the best example of the best thing he did in the game. Apart from the fact that he lost the ball straight away. Winning the ball back, looking up, finding that line breaking pass, and Cristiano Ronaldo going forward and scoring. I want Casemiro to be starting against Newcastle. And he should be starting every single game for Manchester United in the Premier League. It's no offense to Scott McTominay, but Casemiro's getting. He's a five-time Champions League winner. I don't need to explain it to you. We signed an actual true defensive... Uh, somebody who's, nat who's got those natural instincts are defensive. His natural instincts are to protect his defence and win the ball back. That's what he measures himself on. But he's also capable of bringing the ball forward and also getting forward himself, as we saw in different examples. Can't really begrudge a defensive midfielder for missing a header, but he definitely should have scored it. But that's definitely the best that we've seen from Casemiro so far. 
and there is so much more to come. Far from a complete performance, but I wanted to explain with this video how I think he's going to help transform this midfield for Ten Hag. I hope I've shown exactly why there. I quite like that. I'm going to try and do some more. I know you enjoy the tactical videos. I'm trying to elevate the quality a little bit. So make sure you drop a like on the video if you did enjoy it. Subscribe if you're new. I'll speak to you soon.